Topic two, accounting for leases under ASPE. ASPE recognizes two types of leases. They are operating leases and capital leases. Under ASPE, all leases will be tested to determine if they are capital leases. Any lease that is not a capital lease is then an operating lease. Under ASPE, lease obligation and depreciation for an asset under capital lease are calculated in the same fashion as they would be under IFRS. Under ASPE, a lease is a capital lease if any of the following tests are met. First one, it is likely the lessee will obtain ownership of the lease property at the end of the lease. That is, is there a bargain purchase option? For example, selling it for a dollar or pardon me, ability to buy it for a dollar or is and or is there an automatic transfer of title at the end of the lease? Two, the lessee will receive substantially all of the economic benefits of this lease. So will 75% or more of the asset's economic life be used by the lessee? Number three, the lessor is assured of recovering the investment in the lease property plus the return on the investment over the lease term. That is, does the lessee pay present value of a minimum lease payments in excess of 90% of the fair value of the underlying asset? Or four, is there specialized customization to the extent that this asset would be not able to be used by any other party? An example, capital lease. JBC Corp enters into an agreement to lease a truck from Acme Corp. The fair value of the truck is $30,000. The lease term is four years. The truck has a useful life of five years. Annual lease payments are $6,000 and due at the end of the year. The lessee's incremental borrowing rate is 6%. The lease term commences on January 1st, uh, 20X1, and GBC has a December 31st year end. Step one. Determine if the lease is a capital lease. Well, the lease term is four years and the useful life is five years, so 80% of the useful life is covered by the lease term, which is more than 75% that is required to be classified as a capital lease. Therefore, it is a capital lease. Friendly reminder, in a case, you must look at each one of the criteria. For us here and for um, any multiple choice or determining whether or not it is a capital lease or not, we may stick to their criteria. And the criteria said if one of the one of the four criteria are met, then it's a capital lease, which is why we're able to assess that this is a capital lease after looking at just the lease term. So we need to record the lease at the present value of the minimum lease payments. So here, we would use $6,000 a year for four years and discount it at 6%. We can stick it into our financial calculator and we would debit our lease asset of $20,790 and a corresponding lease liability of $20,790. I should note that under ASPE, you cannot record this asset for more than its fair value. So because the fair value of the truck was 30,000 and the present value of these lease payments are 20,790, that is not violated here. Step three, now we're gonna make a payment on this lease. So making a payment reduces the lease liability and the payment is 6,000. And in order to make that payment, we had to part with our cash. Debit the lease liability to reduce the outstanding liability to reflect this payment made and reduce our cash with the credit. Next, we need to record the interest expense. We need to take the remainder. That is, we need to take the liability 
right before this payment was made, because the payment was made at the year end. So right before this payment was made, we would take the lease liability that we would need to have um, accrued interest on, times it by our 6%, and that gives us our interest expense of 1,247. And corresponding, we have a credit to our lease liability. So you'll notice that here, like any other payment, we book the interest, which increases the liability, but we paid out in cash, which reduces that liability. Can you record these in one step or two? Absolutely. The fifth step is making sure we record depreciation on this asset. So if you recall, you capitalized the present value of those lease payments, which was just over $20,000. And the lease term was four years. So because you have a lease term and there's no automatic transfer of title, that is no bargain purchase option and no automatic transfer of title, we need to divide this over its useful life that it's owned within the company. So 20,790 divided by four years means that we're gonna depreciate this asset for $5,197.50 each year and the corresponding credit to accumulated depreciation. The ASPE lessor accounting. A lessor must determine if a lease is an operating lease or a financing type lease. From a lessor's point of view, any lease that is not a finance lease is considered to be an operating lease. And the test for determining if it's a finance lease is similar to the test for a capital lease from the lessee, with one more additional test. That is, if the leased asset is so highly specialized that only the lessee um, could use it, A lessor must also determine if a lease is an operating lease or a finance lease. Any lease that is not a financial type lease is considered to be an operating lease. And the test to determine if it's a financial lease or not is similar to the capital lease term for the lessee. If the lessor is a manufacturer or dealer, it is considered to be a sales type finance lease and the lessor records the transaction as if they had sold the asset recording revenue. If the lessor is not a manufacturer or dealer, it is considered a financing type lease and the lessor recognizes an asset equal to the present value of the lease and recognizes revenue over the life of the lease using the effective interest rate method. This is where the discounted value of revenue versus contracted price represents the time value of money, where finance revenue is earned by the lessor, similar but opposite to what we discussed when we discussed the finance interest costs due to the time value of money incurred on decommissioning provisions. A question. JBC enters into an agreement to lease a facility from Cork, Corp. The fair value of the facility is $600,000. The lease term is 10 years. The facility has a useful life of 15 years. Annual lease payments are $52,000 and due at the beginning of the year. The lessee's incremental borrowing rate is 5.5%. At the end of the lease term, JBC can buy the building from the lessor at a 20% discount to the market price at the time of the end of the lease. True or false, this is a capital lease. Select A for true or B for false. If you said A for true, then you'd be correct. This is because at least one of the tests for a capital lease have been met. Let's take a look a bit closer. The first test being, it is likely that the lessee will obtain ownership at the, of the lease property at the end of the term. In this case, due to the discount being offered, it is likely that the lessee will obtain ownership of the facility at the end of the lease. So this is met. 
the lessee will receive substantially all of the economic benefit of the building. That is, the lease term is greater than 75% of the economics of the asset's useful life. Well, the economic life of the asset is 15 years and the lease term is 10 years. So this is not met because only 66% of the asset's useful life has been um, included in the lease. Three, the lessor is assured of recovering the investment of the lease property plus the return of investment over the lease term. That is, are the present value of minimum lease payments greater than 90% of the fair value of their underlying asset? The present value of the lease payments is $413,500, which is less than 90% of the fair value of the assets, which is $600,000. And there is no mention of any unique customization here. So going back, The fact that it's true is because at the end of the lease term, JBC can buy the building from the lessor at a 20% discount to market price. So JBC, um, using professional judgment, would likely buy the building at the 20% discount if they were to keep it, or they can take that and they can turn around and sell it right away, realizing a majority of this 20% discount. In fact, they could even have a buyer lined up um, ready to purchase that for a significant amount um, of money. So essentially, JBC Corp is going to be getting a free 20% or if they pass along some of the discount to the new purchaser, if they choose not to keep it, uh, a large majority of that 20% discount. And I just want to mention one other thing. It's a 20% discount to the market price at the time of the end of the lease which is why using professional judgment, JBC Corp will use um, this ability to execute on this item. And that's why it is a capital lease. This one's a tricky one. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.